In 1998, Sunderland Association Football Club unveiled four prototype kit designs for a fan's vote to determine what would become the new away kit for the 1998-99 season. Here we see the four designs. Strip A. This is a predominantly white effort that has a blue and red centre panel on the torso along with blue trim on the sleeves and shorts. Strip B. A sky blue shirt with a red and white stripe horizontal band along the front a red collar and red stripes running down the sleeves. Strip C, navy blue with a red and white band across the midriff, a red collar and red and white striped cuffs. Strip D, another white effort with a turquoise and green vertical braid which runs down the torso and continues down the shorts. All four shirts were created by ASICS and feature the logo of Lamptons. Strip C would go on to win the vote. And in the summer of 1998, the retail version was released. The final design featured a few minor adjustments, most notably the horizontal band being reduced to one red hoop and one white hoop, and the cuffs of the sleeves changed to hoops. This kit would become a very memorable shirt for Sunderland as it featured in the 105 point Division 1 title winning campaign. The four prototype kits, however, would go into hiding. To this day, it is not publicly known what happened to these kits. Did club employees take them? Did ASICs take them back? Or were they destroyed? This is one of the great mysteries for Sunderland shirt connoisseurs. For 23 years, no new information surfaced. That was until December 2021, when a Twitter account called At Old Shirts tweeted a photo of two ASICs Sunderland shirts resembling these prototypes. Although these shirts were completely unknown up until this point, it was immediately clear that these shirts are from that time period, and most likely they were produced for the vote, but rejected before the fans could see them. I have managed to get my hands on these two shirts, so let's take a closer look at them and examine the finer details of these once lost Sunderland shirts. As the original four prototypes were named strips A to D, I will refer to these as Strip E and Strip F. Let's take a look at Strip E. This is without question the most bizarre and unique shirt of the two. It is turquoise in colour and features a vertical band which features black, two shades of grey, cream and white. It also features a white ribbed collar with black and green trim, though the green on the collar does not match the turquoise of the shirt. The ASICS logo is positioned above the club badge. Considering the home shirt at the time featured the logo on the collar, it's questionable why they've put it here. This shirt just looks like it was designed by somebody who'd never designed a football shirt before in their lives. This sash here, it kind of looks like one of those colour charts you get in B&Q. And the whole shirt suffers because of that. This logo should not be this close to the badge. It should have either been on the collar or... This shouldn't have been here and that should have been there. I think it was the right decision to leave this one on the cutting room floor. There's just too much going on and it isn't flattering to wear either. The same cannot be said however for strip F. So here we have the shirt that I'm going to be calling strip F and I really like this one. I think this is the much better shirt of the two. Simple colour scheme, white and navy. And it's just the design as a whole is just so much cleaner. Predominantly white, you have two navy stripes going down the torso and they match up perfectly with the navy collar and the navy cuffs. You have Sunderland badge in the middle of the chest, ASICS logo on the collar. And you also have this extra Sunderland badge on the back. If this was one of the voting options, I think it would have stood a good chance of winning. It is made of a much nicer, lighter material than all of the retail ASICS kits of the time. It even has mesh panels for ventilation, something we see on modern day football shirts. Yeah, I love this. I would absolutely wear this on match day. I really like this shirt, and I think it is a real shame that we are only now seeing it. The thing that impresses me the most about these football shirts is the quality. Embroidered club badges, textured felt sponsors, thick branded buttons and extra patches. They are streets ahead of the heat transfer printing we are used to in 2022. So there you have it, 
two lost Sunderland shirts rediscovered after 24 years in the wilderness. Which one is your favourite? Do you think the fans made the right choice in the vote? Leave your comments in the box below. If anybody out there has any more information on the other four lost prototypes, please get in touch. It would be so good to track these kits down and allow the fans to get a better look at them. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this video interesting. Please subscribe for more SEFC content.